could turn with me this morning to Job chapter 2, verses 7 through 10 from the New King James Version. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his feet to the crown of his head. And he took for himself a pot sheared with which to scrape himself while he sat in the midst of the ashes. Then his wife said to him, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God and shall we not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Amen. If you could encourage yourself this morning and tell yourself there is a blessing in the testing. There is a blessing in the testing. This morning we look at the story of Job and this is not Job's first test. He actually had been tested in chapter one and I encourage you to go back and do your homework, read chapter one, and then keep reading till the end so that you can get the full understanding of Job's story. But it started off with a little test where God said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan said, well, you know, Job, of course he loves you, God, because you've blessed him. He's got all these camels and he's got all these sheep and he's got all these oxen. He's got 10 kids. And a bunch of money in the bank as well. Of course, Job loves you, God. And God said, okay, well, go ahead and test him. I'll let you test him and, and make some things not so comfortable. So Job's first test was that he lost his livelihood. Yeah. It said the Sabian raiders stole his oxen. He had 500 oxen and 500 donkeys and then fire from heaven burned up 7,000 sheep. You know, the fluffy little wool ones that could, you know, you could make clothes out of, the very things that keep you comfortable and warm at night. All of a sudden, gone. And then not only did the fire burn up the sheep, but then the Chaldeans stole the camels, all 3,000 of them. So here he has lost his livelihood, his income, his way of wealth. And yet, he has not cursed God. He has not given up on his faith, and he has not stopped serving the Lord. He lost his livelihood, but that was not the only test that Job faced. And then it tells us that he lost his loved ones. It said that wind from the wilderness struck the house of the oldest son when all 10 of the kids were feasting and partying. You know how we do on those Sunday afternoons or, or maybe a Friday night when you want to get together with your family and your friends. They were having a good time. But then the wind came and blew the house down. But then not only did Job lose his livelihood and his loved ones, but he lost his looks. I mean, that's where we find ourselves in the passage today, because here now Satan is testing his health. And it says he was covered in boils from head to toe. And it said that his own friends and family didn't even recognize Job. So he lost his physical looks. But I dare say that he also lost the way people look at him as well. He lost his reputation because now all of a sudden people were wondering, what did you do? to have all this mess in your life. You must be a sinner. You must have been at the club last night. You must have gotten a little bit more than tipsy the last time you took a drink. You must be addicted to those things that you're smoking. You must not be completely right with God. Job lost his livelihood, his loved ones, and his looks. And yet, how do we face the same tests in our lives? Because Job didn't just face one test, but he had test after test after test. And so many times we find ourselves dealing with not just one thing, 
But trial after trial, difficulty after difficulty, we try to pray to God, and yet we still find ourselves struggling with the same temptations. We still find ourselves comfortable in the places that we shouldn't be in. And when we lose that financial stability, when we lose our sense of livelihood, yet we know that the Lord says those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Doesn't it make you want to say, well, who were they talking about? Because I lost a few good things. And when it talks about losing our loved ones, how do we find comfort when the ones we love the most are gone? Today I'm wearing my father's robe. His birthday is tomorrow. And he went to be with the Lord some five years ago. But John 15, verse 15 says that I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Meaning that when you may have lost your loved ones here on earth, if you lost your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your best friend, or even just that coworker, know that God said you can still call on me as your friend. You are still a friend of God and you have not lost the love of your savior but now if you are losing your looks that is another story I mean God can do all things but I'm not sure he really cares about reversing the wrinkles and things like that but know that if you're losing your health that the word tells us that by his stripes we are healed And know that if you are facing the judgment of those saints who shouldn't be judging you to begin with, that the Lord will remind you, even when no one else will believe in you, that God says, you are precious in my sight. You have been honored and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life, meaning I will die for you. I will send my son to lay on the cross for you, to forgive you of your sins because I love you that much. It doesn't matter what other people think of you. It doesn't matter what you may look like as long as you know that you look like a child of God. As long as you know that you look like you are loved, you are special, and you are treasured. You have to believe and know that you are a child of God. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, his own special people. So when you find yourself in the trials of life, when you find yourself facing a test that maybe you didn't feel like you got a chance to study for, hold on to your faith. No matter what test you are facing today, no matter what tests, plural, you are facing in this season, know that God has a plan to prosper you and not to harm you. So can I give you the spiritual study guide for these tests? I mean, you know, for those of you who have passed a few classes in your lifetime, you know that sometimes the teacher will give you a guide and tell you a few things to study to make sure that you will pass the test that is before you. And God has given us a study guide right here in the text. I am so glad that we have a study guide to look to. The first thing we find on our study guide is actually a little bit in reverse because, you know, this is a cumulative test. We got to remember some things that God already told us. So back in chapter one, in verse 20 and 21, it says that Job arose, tore his robe and shaved his head and he fell to the ground and worshiped. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So when you find yourself in a spiritual test, the first thing you need to do is to know who to give credit to. Know who to give credit to. Because in the midst of his test, Job realized that all credit goes to God and to God alone. 
He knew that the very camels and the sheep and the oxen and his 10 kids and, and everything that he lost, the very things that he was blessed with, he knew that it came from God and God alone. His money didn't come from his fancy degrees. His job security didn't come from a, an excellent performance evaluation. His marriage to his wife didn't come from him sending a dozen roses. <laughs> Job knew that all credit went to God, that everything that he was blessed with came from God and God alone. And God has a right to take back what's his. God has a right to do what he wants with the things that he's created. But the scripture tells us that he created all things, even you. And so know that you have to give all credit to God. Give credit to who credit is due. We've seen even the rich and the famous struggle with credit sometimes. You know, Beyonce is going through it with her new um, album where somebody, Diane Warren said, like, why does somebody need 24 writers on a song? And then people had to explain to her, well, she's giving credit to all the ones she sampled from. Sometimes we need a little help from somebody else, but you got to give credit to who credit is due. And then Kelly said, well, you didn't give me credit for my song that you started singing on your energy track. And while there is still debate over whether she should have been compensated because she didn't write the song, someone else did. The fact is that people will look for credit yeah. and want yeah. to get all the credit for what's going good in your life. Yeah, they will. Yeah, they will. I mean, y'all probably don't have any friends that ask you for, you know, a little help sometimes. And then, you know, they want you to give them a shout out and, and things like that. Sometimes people want the credit and the attention. Yeah. And God is reminding us that it shouldn't be about us. It shouldn't be about us. Because here you are judging Khalees for wanting some credit, and God is saying, you're trying to take all the credit for the stuff that I've done. You're trying to look like you bought that car. You're trying to look like you got that job. You're trying to look like you were able to do it on your own. But God said, give him the credit that credit is due. Yeah. Give him praise for the life and breath in your body. Give him praise and thanks for the ability to stand, for the ability to make it through another day. Do you realize that we are now in the month of August, the eighth month of the year, that it was God and God alone that allowed you to get through July with all the drama and all the fuss and all the mess, that it was God and God alone who allowed you to be here today. So give God some credit and give him the verbal credit. Give him financial credit. Give him your time as credit. Give God the credit that he is due. He deserves your worship. He deserves you saying thank you out loud, not just in your heart. He deserves the you dedicating your time to him more than on Sunday mornings. God deserves all the credit. Are you giving him what he is due? I'm gonna let you just think about that for a moment. <laughs> Are you giving God the credit that he is due? And if you're a little worried that maybe you're not, you're a little bit worried about the test that you are facing, maybe you have some anxiety, maybe you have some fear, that's absolutely normal. It's okay to not be okay. But the second thing on our study guide comes from chapter two, verse three. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil, and still he holds fast to his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause. Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him? Know that this test sets you up for success. 
know that this test sets you up for success. Because here God is saying, you can test Job because he's blameless. You can try him because I already know who Job is. I already know that this is a student who knows the material, who's going to pass the test no matter what you throw at him. God is saying, I know my loved ones. I know my children. And I know who can pass this test. I'm not about to send you the ones who are struggling and the ones who haven't quite gotten it right yet. But God is saying he has been through some things. He knows the God to call on. Job is able to handle whatever you throw at him. God knows you. He, he knows your heart. And God is saying that I see you and I have prepared you. I see you and I have prepared you. I see the things you struggle with and yet I still know that you can pass this test. I see the things that you think about and yet I still know that you can pass this test. I see the things in your past and yet I still know that you can pass this test. I have seen you and I have prepared you. Because did you know it's an open book test? It is an open book test. You have the word of God and the scripture says to study, to show thyself approved. God has given you the resources to make sure that you pass the test, but make sure that you study the word of God, that you use the resources that God has given you. It is open book. But not only that, you have access to the teacher. He's got open office hours. You can pray anytime, day or night. Call on the teacher. And it's not cheating if the teacher gives you the answer. If you call on him, the word says, I will answer you. If you're struggling and you don't know what to do, God will lead you. He will guide you. He will direct you. God is saying, you have the resources. You are set up for success. Stop worrying, stop crying, stop fainting over the fear of what might happen. And start rejoicing over what will happen, over the fact that you will pass this test, over the fact that you will see God get the glory, over the fact that you will know that you know that you know that God is good and he is going to get you through this test. Know that this test sets you up for success. And then verse 6, the Lord said to Satan, behold, he is in your hand, but spare his life. That's God allowing Satan to mess with his health, to allowing him to mess with his looks, allowing him to, to, to have go through visible struggles. But the third thing on our study guide is to know that there are limits to your loss. There are limits to your loss. God is saying you can mess with his health. You already killed off his, um, half his family. You killed his 10 kids and, and took away the oxen and the sheep and the camel. But don't touch his life. Because I'm still God. I'm still in control. It may look like you have the power, Satan. But I have the victory. I'm the one who created you. I'm the one who is able to work all things together for your good. So know that your limits have a loss when it feels like you're going through trial after trial after trial and that there's no expiration date. Know that God has a limit. And the scripture tells us that he won't tempt us beyond what we can bear. If he gives you a temptation, there'll be a way that you can escape. But he also tells us that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning time. I know you're grieving right now. I know you're hurting right now. I know you're struggling financially right now. I know that you're not feeling 100% right now. But God is saying there is a limit to your loss. And my plan is for you to prosper and not to harm you. I'm not planning for you to stay in this every day, all day, 124-7. Because there is something that I have greater in store for you. This test is time limited. This test is time limited. 
2 Corinthians 4, verse 17 and 18 says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. That test you're going through is temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Meaning that no matter what it is you struggle with here on earth, God has an eternal reward for you prepared. That God is going to get the glory and God is going to bless you and God is going to keep you and God is going to protect you. That whatever it is you're going through right now is only temporary. There is a limit to the things that you can lose. There is a limit to how much pain you will be going through. I know it feels like you've already exceeded your limit. But God is saying there is a limit. And can I just testify for a moment? Because during this season, I've experienced some tests on the job. I've been told some things I didn't like sometimes. And then I had some issues with my car. My car is currently in the shop, thanks to the person who tried to steal it. But then last week, as you know, I was trying to prepare a message for the Lord. You know how that goes. Um, I just happened to face a test of my health. I went through allergy testing. I went through what's called a skin patch allergy test. That is a five-day test. So they stick these patches of 36 allergens on your back. And you have to have it on there for three days. So the first day, I started breaking out in hives. The second day, I looked, well, my hands and my feet, thank goodness not my face, but my hands and my feet reminded me of Will Smith and Hitch because they were a little bit swollen to the point where it hurt to move and to walk and to even write things down. And I wanted to call off work because my health was just not in the best of cases, but I knew that there was a limit to the pain that I was going through. I knew that on the third day I was going to the doctor and they were going to take the things off my back. I knew that on the third day, God, Jesus rose from the grave. So if he could do it for Jesus, he could do it for me. And I knew that the temporary setbacks I was facing was only going to last but a moment. Now it was a long three days and I tell you, I am still in the healing process, but knowing that this trouble won't last always is the very thing that allowed me to keep going and to not give up, to not say, oh God, I'm so tired. God, I'm so itchy. God, I can't do anything. I can't read your word, God. A lot of times we want to just give up, stop praying. We want to stop coming to church just because things are uncomfortable. Because we set our own limits instead of going the distance that God said that we could go. But know that God has put a limit to your loss. And when you know who to give credit to, when you know that you are set up for success, when you know that there are limits to your loss, then God can turn your test into a testimony. God can turn your test into a testimony. I was able to testify about my health because the very test, the very pain, the very aches, the very uncomfortable thing allowed me to see that my God is a healer, allowed me to testify that God will be with me through the good times and the bad. It's not enough to just praise him for all the good things going on in your life, but to know that he is with you when you're struggling, to know that he is with you when you're hurting, to know that he is with you when you are uncomfortable and not sure if you are going to pass the test, but if you give credit to, to God, give him the credit that he is due, when you remember that he has set you up for success, when you know that there are limits to your loss, then you can testify to the goodness of God. Then you can realize that this is only a test. This is not my destruction. This is not going to take me out. This is not going to destroy me. This is not going to kill me. I I don't have to give up. I don't have to give up. No matter what test you are going through, realize that your God is tested and true.
Realize that your God is tested and true. I know it feels like you're going through a test right now, but help me you know that the test is not about the teacher. It's not about um, how much the teacher knows, but it's, it's to remind you how much you know and to bring things to your recollection so whatever test it is you're going through, this is a time where you can remember how good God is in your life. You can remember that if God did it before, he will do it again. If he brought me out of dark he will bring me to the light again. And God is saying, now I'm going to do a new thing. I know you saw me bless you. I know you saw me heal you of that cold the last time. I know you saw me put a little bit in the bank the last time. But God said, I'm about to do a new thing. I'm about to, to bring forth a new healing. I'm about to bring forth a new way of blessing you that you haven't seen before. But because you are going through this test, there are rewards for you studying. There are rewards for you talking to the teacher. There are rewards for you walking in the success that he has called you to. There are rewards for you not giving up on God. And when you serve God, when you trust God, when you stick with him through the good and the bad, God will turn your test into a testimony. You'll be able to say, I saw God in the midst of that test. I saw him make a way out of no way. I saw him open doors that no man could open. I saw him bring up new life out of things that look dead and destructive. I saw God bring strength in the midst of my weakness. I saw God help me forgive and let go of the bitterness despite what they did to me. I saw God help me be more patient. I saw God help me be more loving. I saw God help me be more giving. Can anyone testify today about the goodness of God in your life? Can you give God some praise and thank him for how he has made a way out of no way? Can you testify that he's a healer? Can you testify that he's a protector? Can you testify that he is a provider? Can you testify that he is a restorer? Can you testify that he will bless you out of your mind? Chapter 42 of Job tells you how Job was blessed in spite of his test, God gave him double what he had before. And God is saying, I'm about to bless you beyond what you could think or imagine if you just continue to hold on through this test. I have more in store for you because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And God is saying, you can testify to that. You can testify and say that you know that you know that you know that you serve a God who is good. You serve a God who is great. You serve a God that he alone is worthy of all the praise. And we just worship God today for giving us blessings through the testing. Amen. This has been the first AME Church of Manassas broadcast of our Sunday morning worship service. We are so excited and honored that you chose to be a part of our extended E-Fame family and pray that you have been truly blessed by today's powerful message. Of course, you are always welcome and encouraged to join us right here in person at our main campus located at 10313 South Grant Avenue in Manassas, Virginia. However, for the sake of safety for everyone, just know that First Day AME Church is in alignment with COVID-19 protocols and procedures as prescribed by health professionals and our leaders. Pre-registration is required before attending on Sunday at www.famechurch.com. Face masks are required at all times while in the building and social distancing will also be enforced in the sanctuary. If you are not ready or able to return in person just yet, you are always welcome at our second campus, anytime, anywhere, as part of our eFame family at www.famechurch.com, on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Just search for at First AME Church Manassas. We also ask that you continue to regularly support First AME Church of Manassas through your generous tithes and offerings with PushPay by texting Fame Church to 77977. You can give online at famechurch.com slash giving, or you can mail your contribution to First AME Church of Manassas, 10313 South Grant Avenue, Manassas, Virginia, 20110. Once again, thank you for joining us today for the First AME Church of Manassas Sunday morning worship service. Be safe and be blessed. <laughs>